What separates the good businesses from the great ones? The ones that just kind of get by from the ones that excel. Well, let's talk about that this morning. Happy Monday, friends. Thomas Joyner here with Business on Purpose. Excited uh, that you're here watching this for a little bit. So my wife and I, we tested positive for COVID this week. And so I have been ripping through the books. And I've loved it as I've kind of, you know, had the time to read a book for fun, to read a book to kind of educate myself, um, to read one for kind of growth in my faith and, and just kind of balance, you know, and bounce back and forth uh, between them as I get excited about one and one kind of gets old and whatnot. So I married a girl from Kentucky, as a lot of you know, a state known for its bourbon and, and naturally I've kind of grown to truly love tasting new bourbons and, and just hearing the story behind them. And this may sound overly introspective, but, but the families that, that produce bourbon, they spend their entire lives practicing and perfecting their bourbons. And I can appreciate the work that goes into it. So a few weeks back, a friend handed me this book, Pappy Land, A Story of Family, Fine Bourbon, and the Things That Last by Wright Thompson. It's masterfully written and, and incredible storytelling as the author kind of walks through his family's history and he kind of weaves it together with the story of the most famous and hard to come by bourbon in the world, the Van Winkle Family Reserve, or Pappy, as most people call it. You know, it didn't take me long for, for me to really start taking notes as the story really sank in and affected me. And kind of how it goes is in 1972, the bourbon business was in a nosedive, right? Profits were just plummeting. They were meager and the distillery that the great Pappy Van Winkle built was sold by his son and cheap imitations were made under the same label. They began to use this kind of new yeast to, to produce the bourbon and while it kind of technically worked, it lost some of its uniqueness and some of the intricacies that really made it the best. And the author, uh, he said something that I kind of initially just passed by. And I came back for a second read and he said, he said this, more and more today, we don't want to do the work or take the chances required for greatness. We try to fix all these shortcuts on the back end with marketing and branding, modern fancy words that mean lie. Let me say that one more time. He said, <clears throat> he said, more and more today, we don't want to do the work or take the chances required for greatness. And we try to fix all these shortcuts on the back end with marketing and branding, modern fancy words that mean lie. We got to unpack that for a bit. So what is he really saying? Well, he's saying that too often we won't do the work it takes to truly be great to truly solve the problems our world needs, or we settle for something that's not good enough. But greatness requires something else entirely. Greatness requires hard work and taking chances. And, and most people kind of, uh, I think they equate taking chances to foolishness. But I don't think the two always go hand in hand. It's not foolishness to innovate and try new things. It's not foolishness to, to invest time into training our teams or making sure our client experience is the best it possibly can be. But so often, we stop short of that, right? We settle because it's hard work. And that's something we tell each client we work with. There's no kind of magic wand, right, that we can just magically fix your business. And if there was, we'd probably charge a lot more for it. No, it takes hard work day after day, week after week, month after month to build a great business. But here's the amazing thing. What's left over after the hard work is the thing that lasts. Think about it with home building, right? When we use quality supplies and, and a creative approach, we build a house that lasts, not one that falls apart within 15 to 20 years because we just kind of build it haphazardly to make short-term cash flow. So the question stands. Where are you taking shortcuts? Where are you using marketing and branding to maybe in a roundabout way lie to the customer? It's one of the things I love talking through with our business owners when we write out their unique core values, when they say things like excellence or extra mile customer service or we wanna be the best. We've gotta make sure that that's not just lip service, that we truly mean it. Because you can't, you can't take a shortcut and accomplish things like that. There's no shortcut to getting there. So here, have you ever put out an ad and thought, 
I don't even believe that about our company, but maybe it will drive sales. Just feeling like you're faking it. Well, I know that I may be in the, in the minority here, but I believe we can do better than that. And I'll finish with this last thought. During my quarantine, I'll admit that I got sucked down some rabbit holes on YouTube and I found myself watching an interview with Jeff Bezos, the CEO of Amazon. And I know he stirs up mixed emotions with people just hang in with me here. It was an interview with Jeff Bezos from 1999. And the interviewer was asking him about the viability of a company based solely on the internet, which sounds crazy to me 22 years later, right? That this is even a question. But Bezos had some incredible answers that he finished with. And the one thing that struck me was that in 1999, in the midst of something that was a risk, right? Something that had never been done before, Bezos said this about his company. He said, that's what we're about. If there's one thing Amazon.com is about, it's obsessive attention to the customer experience end to end. That's not taking a shortcut. That's innovation, obsessive attention to his work in a direction that invokes change. Let me say that again, right? Let me read that quote again because it's, it's really, really powerful. That's what we're about. If there's one thing Amazon.com is about, it's obsessive attention to the customer experience end to end. So let me send you off with a question today. Where are you tempted to take a shortcut? Where are you tempted to not put in the work in your business? And how is it robbing you of being able to be authentic with who you are to your customers? Where are you tempted to take a shortcut or not put in the work in your business? And where is it robbing you of being able to be authentic with who you are to your customers? That's a heavy question, I know. But doing the hard work will be what separates you over the long haul. It will build lasting relationships with everyone who does business with you. I promise you it matters. Thanks so much for listening today. Take a few minutes while you're here. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube and our podcast. It is worth your time. Hope you have a great week. Take care. Everybody.